Welcome to the Peer Meet the Students podcast, where every month we showcase a student or researcher from the Peer Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center community. My name is Crystal, and I'm here with Laura. We're both from the Peer Student Committee. And today we're joined by James Gordon. James Gordon is a graduate student at Oregon State University pursuing a Master's of Science in Structural Engineering. His research focuses on simulating the behavior of steel frame structures exposed to fire. He's working on developing modeling techniques in open seas and benchmarking those techniques against experimental tests performed at the National Institute of Standards and Technology NIST. Before studying at Oregon State University, James attended Oklahoma State University, where he was involved with research focusing on the behavior of slip critical steel connections. Welcome, James. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. We'd like to start out with a few short, fun questions. Um, the first question is, if you could have a superpower to boost your research, what would it be? I think I'd have to say uh, the superpower of not needing sleep. I'd say time is the biggest constraint. So having more of that to do some research and, and do things would be nice. The next question is, what has been your favorite moment in grad school so far? Uh, so last year, uh, when everything was shut down, I would go on these hikes. And when I got to my destination, I would sit down and work a little bit just to kind of relax, uh, but still be productive. And one time, another grad student in my group went with me and we woke up real early and did this hike and we watched the sunrise and just like graded papers and stuff. And that was just very memorable and very nice. What hobbies do you enjoy? Uh, so I guess I already mentioned hiking, but really just anything outdoors. I love to fish, uh, camp. I like playing sports, especially like tennis, if I can find someone to hit, hit around with me. So any of that is great. Um, the next question is, do you have any morning or nightly routines? Yeah, I sort of have a morning routine. Uh, whenever I wake up, I go make myself breakfast and some hot tea. And I just like write down a list of everything I have to do that day just to keep me on track. And I don't know, I've been doing that probably since grad school, but I don't know, hopefully it sticks. <laughs> um, which course have you enjoyed the most in school? I'd say that's a toss up between seismic design and advanced steel design, uh, probably because I don't know, I think it's really fun to think about load path in a structure and both of those courses kind of hit that in similar but different ways. So in advanced steel design, we looked a lot of connections and kind of the load path in those and then seismic design looking at uh, lateral force resisting systems and both those classes were pretty fun. Thanks for answering all the fun questions. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the academic um, career questions. So the first question is, what made you interested in earthquake engineering? Um, I would say really what sparked my interest initially uh, was I felt an earthquake in Oklahoma a couple years ago, and I got really nervous that my apartment building was going to like fall down or something. So then when we started studying uh, like those topics in class, I would like paid extra attention to them. Um, and just kind of started learning more and more. Um, and then eventually my senior year of undergrad, I took uh, structural dynamics and a foundations class. And I got to look at, I did a project on base isolation. And I think that's, that's when I really said like, this is something really cool that I wanna continue to learn about and hopefully do as a career. So that's where it started. <laughs> uh, the next question is, what are your research objectives? So my main research objective um, is to show that open seas can be used to simulate the behavior of structures in fire. Um, and so that's important because open seas is open source and it takes a lot less time to run a simulation in open seas versus other finite element uh, programs that are used in industry right now. Um, and also open seas is already popular in the earthquake engineering community. So we're hoping that um, by showing that open seas can do fire simulations and kind of showing how that can be done, will lower the barrier um, for engineers to simulate uh, post-earthquake fires and fire-only scenarios. Thank you. So the next question is, what are your career goals? Um, that's kind of a hard question. I really want to do a little bit of everything, but I do, I would say I have like some broader career goals 
Um, and the first is just to be designing structures to withstand natural hazards or extreme loading events. That's something that's always interested me. Um, so being able to do that in a career is important to me. I'd say the second thing, um, I like the challenge of learning. So I want my career to reflect that um, and to continually be learning throughout whatever I do. And finally, I would really like to be in the position to mentor other engineers. Um, I'm really grateful for the people that have poured into me and help me get to where I am now. So I would really like to one day provide that for someone else. What are some of the most important or influential aspects when doing fire simulations in open seas? Uh, two of the most important um, considerations, I would say, or aspects of modeling uh, for fire in open seas would be one, the constitutive models you're using, and two, the boundary conditions. So when I'm talking about constitutive models, that's just defining your materials and your temperature dependent material properties. Um, I think a good way to think about that um, is unlike an earthquake where you have your loads that are changing with time and a fire simulation, your gravity loads are constant, but as the temperature changes with time, your material properties are changing with time and that's gonna affect the resistance of your structure. Um, so just making sure that you're updating those material properties uh, correctly uh, as the temperature changes um, is really important to getting accurate results from your fire simulation. And then the second thing I said uh, was boundary conditions. So <clears throat> if you think about it, when a steel beam heats up, it wants to expand and it's uh, there's extra restraint from the structural members around it. So you're developing these large axial forces that are then transferred through connections and while that's not really a problem as much with um, like your moment connections or your lateral force resisting system, it's really important for your gravity connections because your gravity connections aren't designed to handle those extra loads. Um, and then also that restraint or with that restraint, there's like extra moment that develops. So the idealized pin is no longer very accurate for that gravity connection. So just taking into account uh, your boundary conditions and making sure that you're simulating those connections properly is important. So what are some of the activities in your research that you find the most challenging? Uh, really getting started has been the most challenging thing for me. Um, I, when I started this project, I did not have a lot of experience with open seas um, or just coding at that level in general. And so, um, just like building my first models and being confident in what I was doing took a little bit of time. Uh, and that was definitely a struggle at first. Can you tell us about any achievements which you are especially proud of? Yeah, I'm pretty early in my professional career, so I haven't completed any major projects or anything, but I would say there is a project that I'm fairly proud of. Um, in my undergrad, I worked on this project where me and my group were trying to figure out why our clients um, large oil tanks were blowing down during construction and to complete that I kind of had to that was my first project where I had to apply you know some technical knowledge from class and use um, some structural analysis software to you know figure out a practical solution for a problem and so it was kind of difficult but I was very proud of completing that project. So James thank you so much for joining us today we really had a wonderful time learning more about your work as well as yourself. And before you go, um, if our viewers or listeners have any questions for you, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can email me. I can give you my email. Will that be posted with this video, I assume? Yeah. 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 So, by email. <laughs> Great. Uh, so this concludes our monthly spotlight for the Meet the Peer Student Series. See you in the next one.